Hi, I'm Scott Martin, and this is my challenge. Woo! Woo! Each week I go out on the water with a different pro angler for a little friendly competition. It's always a competition. Yeah! I'm coming! Woo, baby! Be kind to me, Big Daddy. That'll work. There's no money on the line, just bragging rights. Woo, yeah! Woo -hoo -hoo. Bang. Yeah! This is my show and my challenge. Yeah! Woo! It's on. That could be a difference. Are you up to the challenge? Well, are you? Oh, yes, baby. Yeah! Oh, that's what I'm talking about. Woo! Oh! That's what's awesome. Woo! Four pounder. Woo! Man! Tooshiated. Are you scared? Hi, I'm Scott Martin. Welcome to the Scott Martin Challenge. Today I'm going to be fishing against legendary pro, Mike Worm. Hi, I'm Mike Worm from Hot Springs, Arkansas. I basically started fishing when I was about five years old. My mother originally got me interested in fishing, and her and I together got my father interested in fishing, and then we all three fished all the time. I fished my first professional tournament in 1991 at Alton, Illinois, and been fishing ever since in the Pro Tour. I really enjoy what I do. It's a great career. And I've got the name, and I've got the game for little Scott Martin's challenge today. Hey, Mike, I'm glad you came out. You bet. I wouldn't miss it for the world. Oh, man, this is beautiful right here in Arkansas, not too far from where you live. It took me about two hours this morning. It's a great drive over. The cotton fields are getting all, you know, cleaned out, getting ready for duck season, so it's going to be a good day for fishing today. A good deal. I tell you, you've got a little advantage on me, I have to admit it. I'm, I'm, I'm out of my element a little bit from down in South Florida, but um, yeah, I might have to watch a little bit out I'll here. I'll take all the advantages I can get. I know you're kind. You young guys out there, boy, you ought to catch them good, so I'm looking forward to a little well, challenge. We're going to have a little challenge out there. What, you know, most importantly, we're going to show the viewers how we approach these lakes differently. Uh, you're going to be in your boat, you're going to be fishing with your lures, doing the things you like to do, and I'm going to be in my boat doing the same thing. And we're going to be able to instruct the viewers on how to catch more fish and how we approach different bodies of water. You know, the conditions here are beautiful. I think the water temperatures are probably close to the 70s. And uh, we're going to have a lot of fun. We're going to have some bragging rights at the end of the day now. Bragging rights is right, but we can do a lot of things. So we've got a nice body of water here. We've got some trees, and we've got some wood, some rock, and even some, some vegetation. So we can do a very amount of lures. But the biggest thing is, you're going to have to catch more than I do. Well, I'm going to try as hard as I can. I tell you, you better watch out. All right, I'm going to catch those big Florida strings. <laughs> I hear you. Well, Scott, you ready to get after me? Yeah, you make sure you stay on your side now. Hey. You see that down through here? That means the middle's all open, right? Hey, it's on right now. Okay, as soon as we step in this boat, we're not friends anymore until the end of the day. Well, okay, I'll go with that. <laughs> I'll go with that. You know, when you're fishing a new body of water, I've never been on this lake before. It's got a lot of neat characteristics. It's got standing timber. It's got shoreline grass. It's even got a deep end to it. Um, with probably some 16 and 18 foot water down on the steep end. I'm going to initially go around this thing pretty fast and try to cover a lot of water. I'm going to throw, what I'm going to do is I'm going to throw a white swimming jig and a top water and some moving baits to try to find out what these fish are keying on, kind of where they're hanging out. And uh, that'll give me a better idea for later in the day to catch some bigger fish. I think the first quarter started, gentlemen. It's time to get after it. A buzz bait's really a big fish bait. There's one. Gum, I missed him. That buzz bait got nipped right there. It's always good to start throwing a buzz bait early in the morning. It falls right along in line there with the, with the jig as a big fish bait. So those big ones really like a buzz bait, and it's really good to start with a buzz bait early in the morning. There's one. Oh, oh no! Dang gum. He's not very big, but he was feisty. Man, they're just not very active. We've been throwing that buzz bait, that spinner bait, and they haven't been as aggressive as I hoped they'd be. So let's do something a little slower. It puts that tube out on the edge of this grass. There's one. Booyah! That's the first flip for that tube. We got the neatest little system going on today, guys. I got this little button here, and I can push this, and I'm talking to Scott on our walkie-talkie. Hey, Scotty, I just caught one about a pound, pound and a half. I'm coming, don't you worry. Little old bass he's catching over there. He's got one, though. 
I've already caught it on. I'm gonna get back to covering some water, like I said. This little bait here is a, what they call a horny toad. It's got little legs on it. Really a lot like a, like a flapping shad or a, or a buzz bait. Pretty much 100% weedless. And uh, it's real heavy. And the nice, nice thing about this bait is it throws real well. You can come right through really thick grass like that right over there. Just go right through the top of it. And if there's a big one in there, it'll crunch it. Oh man, that's a good one there. Oh yeah, that's what I'm talking about right there. All right, that's a nice fish right there. That came on that little, on that little frog. It's a cloudy day, these fish are gonna be feeding on stuff moving. And that frog right there, they either think it's a real frog or they'll think it's a little bait fish crashing around. So that's a good start. That's a good, uh, about a two and a half pounder. Hey Mike, check it out. All right, that minnow? That's, this, we're getting there. Put on a top secret bait. Can't tell you what it is though. This time of year in the fall, these fish, a lot of times you'll find them grouped up. So if you catch one, you really want to pick apart, pick apart the area really, really thoroughly. Because you can easily catch a couple more right in that same spot. There he is. Yep. Not as big, but see, just exactly what I was telling you. There was more fish right on that point. I caught that one before that, the cast before that, made a lot of commotion, jumping around in the boat, but still, rigged my bait up, had a couple of real nice casts right in there, and uh, caught another one. That's a keeper. Hey, Mike, you got number two. All right, no fair catching two in one place. <laughs> Secret bait again. It'd take him all day to figure out what I'm throwing, probably. We'll, let, we'll, we'll keep it between you and me. You know, we really got a little advantage here. Because usually during tournaments, you can't see the other boats. You know, you don't want to. But, but in this case, I can see Scott. He's already caught him a couple of fish. And I think he's throwing, I know, I can know what he's throwing. He's throwing that horny toad across the top of those grass. And we might have to get one out and try that in a minute. So this is kind of an advantage. Look oh, yeah. Easy, baby. Easy now. Oh, that's smoking. I'm shaking in my boots. Well, that is too good of a spot right there to just to keep throwing this frog on. They didn't come up and bite on it anymore, but I'm gonna, I'm gonna throw this tube in there. Being versatile, being ready to, to change and throw in on something like that is important in tournament fishing for sure. You know, we'll be ready to change, having rods ready. I like trying to be versatile when I'm out here fishing. Um, as I fish tournaments all around the country, I try not to get too, too uh, set on doing one particular thing. I like to keep a couple different rods laying on the deck of my boat and I like mixing it up a little bit like, like that right there. Oh, it's a big one. Yes. That's what I'm talking about, being versatile. And that's what I'm talking about. I was throwing the frog a minute ago. Something told me to pick up this tube and pitch it around some of those logs, and it pays off. Well, I hope Mike didn't see that one. You, you scared? I'm shaking in my boots. <laughs> I tell you what, we got a long time to fish out here, and he's too good of a fisher to be talking too much, too much smack to him. But I tell you what. I'm gonna give him all I can. So I, I think I know what Scott's using, so you know, hey, we're not dummies. We're gonna try to get on something he's using is, since he's caught some fish. We saw that. It's only told really just a piece of chunk of plastic. All the artificial lures are basically just chunks of plastic and wood and rubber. It's our job as a fisherman to make them look real. And that's where the skill comes in as far as working your baits. The other skill is in finding the fish. That's, the, to me, the most important, being able to find them. Especially on a tournament trail, because most all of us are good enough to catch them. It's the finding them consistently that makes you a good angler. Little bitty guy. Mike caught some bait. Mike's a great bait fisherman. But he hung on to it back. They're gonna need to be a lot bigger than that, bud. Well, I'm, I'm running them down there to you as fast as I can. Okay, back to a moving bait. Oh, man, there he is. That's a good one. 
good one there. Mike, you better watch out. Now that is cool. Dude. You know, like I said, being versatile, that's the key for today. On a cloudy day like today, you've got a couple different ways to catch them. You can catch them flipping a the tube. You can catch them throwing a spinner bait. You can probably catch them. Of course, you're going to catch them on this little frog. And what keyed me on that spot was that I fished a spot behind me pretty well and caught that nice fish on that log. And this is the first little, uh, little island with the wind blowing on it. And that's the key right here was that the wind was hitting that grass. And I threw this frog basically right off the edge of that grass and reeled it down like, 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 a, like a buzz bait. And, uh, and that fish just came up and, and hurt it bad. I mean, just killed it. Kind of quiet in this boat. We need to catch some fish, get some excitement going again. Oh, yeah. I'm not going to rush this one. Look out! Easy, baby. Easy now. There's a little fish. That'll help the call. We caught that one on a on the tube. It's like we caught the first one on the good old Strike King tube. Sitting around the isolated structure. We I mean, talked about isolated structure earlier. There's an isolated little stump right there that came right off that little isolated stump. All right, playtime's over. Now, why would they hit that little frog and not hit that? God! What, Mike, what Mike's doing smart. He just reeled his buzz bait right through that little swampy area and a fish came up and struck his buzz bait and missed it. And he instantly put that buzz bait down and grabbed a jig or a worm and pitched it in there real slow. And a lot of times you can follow up a fish like that that's active, catch him. Oh, why don't you get that now? And that's how it's done. That's why you should always have a backup lure to your buzz bait. You throw a buzz bait in there and you miss that fish, you immediately throw a plastic worm or a tube or something like that in there and catch that fish because he's still there looking for something to eat. Pretty good job. Followed up perfect. In, in bass tournaments, we do a thing called defense every once in a while. And that's where you make your opponent think you're doing something and think you're catching them. Like right now, I'm behind this bush and Mike can't see me. So what I'll do is I'll throw out and pretend like I'm fishing. Oh, my God. Woo, that was a big one on top water. What in the world was all that about? See, now he thinks I was still on the top water and had like a 10 pounder. That's called defense. Did you run over a carp? No, he just, that top water lure I was throwing nailed it right at the boat. Oh. What are you throwing? Throwing a tube right now. Oh, okay. They're eating the top water pretty good, the big ones at least. It's kind of the size you need. <laughs>